she's like, are you sure that it's, and I was like, It's Ro. Welcome back. I'm on my way to our anatomy scan. So this is our third doctor's appointment. We did eight weeks where it was an internal ultrasound. We did 12 weeks where it was an on the belly ultrasound. The video where Adam wanted to buy his own ultrasound machine. And then we did this one, which is 17 weeks. So it's the full blown anatomy scan. I have a lot of questions for my doctor today. <coughs> First and foremost, my heartburn is pretty bad. So my friend who is a nurse or a nurse aide, I just call her a nurse, we're just gonna call her a nurse. She suggested that I ask them to see what I can do for it, what I can take for it. I try to stay away from pharmaceuticals as much as possible. But second of all, my asthma has been out of control the past week, week to week and a half. And they were supposed to give me an albuterol inhaler, but they never called it in. So last night I was up half the night, I felt bad. I've kept Adam up between coughing, labored breathing. The strange thing is, I think because I'm in a different environment as far as climate, when my asthma was at its worst, I was a little kid, I lived on Long Island and in New Jersey, humid, beachy areas. So I would always feel pressure in my chest. I would feel like somebody was sitting on my chest. It would get very tight and I would get really itchy on my chin. Three other people in my whole life told me that. I looked it up. They said it's a thing, but there, there there's no explanation for why. It's just a phenomenon that happens to some people right before or while they're having an asthma attack. And it's like this, itch that's deep inside your chin that you literally cannot scratch it's so bizarre but i've not gotten any of that while i've been out here the way that my asthma attacks happen here is that i'll get a very dry feeling all in here and then i will when i breathe in it burns and it's really really dry and then i will get the attack and it'll just be a lot of coughing a lot of having to <clears throat> clear trying to clear and then labored breathing. I think it's also anxiety because I am afraid of what it's gonna do to the baby, you know? And I woke up this morning asking Adam, like, do you think the baby's getting enough oxygen? And I asked my nurse friend and she was like, they both said the same answer. That baby's gonna take the oxygen first before you. I wanna see what's worse, me dealing with asthma without drugs. Is that worse for the baby? Or me caving and taking albuterol? At the next light, turn left. Is that worse for the baby? I also want to, because I could tough it out, my asthma's not that, that bad. I also want to see if there's an option for a non-stimulant inhaler for when my attacks happen at night. I am using a humidifier all night long. I stopped running the one during the day. I'll have to use that again. I will put a link to the humidifier that I love and I swear by, by and I use. They gave me a 20% discount for you guys. I have not been crazy as far as my food is concerned with the baby. Probably more because I don't eat dairy. So I don't have to worry about cheese, soft cheese or anything like that that you're not allowed to have. I don't eat it anyway. I don't eat meat. So I don't have to worry about deli meat or stuff like that. So I really haven't been that crazy as far as diet because my diet's so healthy anyway. But I am kind of crazy as far as pharmaceuticals and drugs and plus i'm gonna pick my poison and i want all the epidurals in the hospital when it comes time to push out this little man so meeting adam there he his boss was cool let him leave work early and he's gonna have to go back but for this i did not tell him i got a text that they're running 25 minutes behind but you know ob's ob's deliver babies and we never know when that's gonna happen usually so that's that got to is this it? Yeah, I think this is it. I think this is not it. Oops. I'm sorry, cars behind me. Oh, that was it, huh? All right, I can go in here. All right, let me pay attention. Why didn't my GPS tell me, though? Turn right into the parking lot. A day late and a dollar short, sweetheart. All right, let me go find Adam. We'll take as much as we can. He said Get that... the parking lot for your destination. No <laughs> I did before you told me to. We're going to find Adam, and we're going to film as much of this appointment as they will possibly let us. I love you guys, and I'll be back ASAP. Mwah. Look who I found. Are you still on your call? Are you still on your call? Me 
Papa night, I can't help but think back to Okay, we are back from the appointment. So Adam, let's just start from the whole thing. Adam had a work conference call that he had to take. Congress people, senators, a whole bunch of people were on this call. So he was on the call from the office and was just gonna hang up when it was time for us to go into the appointment. Well, they called me back and usually what they'll do is they'll call me back and they'll take my weight and my blood pressure and any blood if they need to, anything like that. And Adam waits in the hallway or the waiting room, depending on where he's supposed to wait. And then when it's time for the ultrasound and the doctor's appointment for the big ultrasound, which 17 weeks we thought was the anatomy scan, then he'll come back in with me. So as they called me, he said, do I come now? because last time he actually came for the weight and the blood pressure and he was shocked at how low my blood pressure was. So she's like, no, he can't come back today. And I said, I was like, I thought it was the anatomy scan today. And she said, no, how far along are you? And I said, 17 weeks. And she's like, no, we don't do that till 19, 20 weeks. Like we can't see what we need to see. And I was like, but the doctor told me last time that it, this one was the anatomy scan. Maybe I misunderstood. Maybe he was saying like, you can get your blood test now, but you'll know the gender at the anatomy scan. If you don't, I, I don't, I don't know what happened, but I turned back to Adam and I was like, Ugh. like I was like a little kid that didn't want to go without her daddy. So I went in the back, they took my weight. I gained only a pound in four weeks, which I'm shocked because my belly popped and my legs are thicker, more, I'm just retaining more water. So shocked at that, I'm not complaining. And my blood pressure was low. And at this point, I don't really, now I'm like, not that I don't like the tech, but I'm like, she doesn't know what she's talking about, right? Cause in my head, I'm right. And so my blood pressure was, she had to do it twice. She didn't get a reading the first time. I don't know why. And she's like, can you uncross your legs and we'll do it again? Cause I'm wearing a dress. I just automatically crossed my legs and we took it again. And it was 96 over 58. And I always have lower blood pressure because of the way I exercise. Then they pulled me into the exam room waiting for the doctor. And I texted Adam. I was like, I don't know what happened. I don't know why you're back here, but I'm trying not to cry. And I'm so hormonal. You know, when you're, <laughs> when you're hormonal and you're trying not to cry and it makes you cry because you're trying not to cry. So I started to make myself tear up and I was like, don't, don't, don't do this. And he was so sweet. He was like, I am right here. Don't worry. He said, see if the doctor will let me come back there. And I was like, of course I'm going to ask. I knew that they weren't going to let him come back there and that's okay. Those are the rules. And I'm just grateful. He's even allowed to come in with me to the ones that he's allowed because of the way COVID has been that so many women had to go to every appointment alone, labor alone, in a mask. I am so grateful. So I'm not mad. I was just a little emotional about it. The nurse practitioner came in and I told her my asthma has been really bothering me. I said last time we spoke about an inhaler, but it hasn't been called in yet. She's like, we called it in already. She's like, I am so sorry. I don't know how that got, didn't, didn't get called in. And I remember talking to you about it. She said, if that ever happens again, do not hesitate to email the portal because they answer within 24 hours or to call the office. She's like, please don't suffer. Please don't wait. And I swear I am my mother's daughter. Cause I used to yell at my mom. You are not bothering people. You're paying them to do this. Call, ask questions, stand up for yourself. And here I am like, I don't want to bother them. I'll just be for my inhaler. So that was that we did not do any kind of pictures today we just did the on the belly doppler and adam was allowed to facetime and i asked her i'm like is this awkward because she was like awkward i'm like is this awkward that you're like on video and she's like no we're used to it we do it all the time she took the baby's heart rate and i can't remember if it was 135 or 145 i have to ask adam when he comes home because like I said, he was on FaceTime. One of you guys told me baby's heartbeat drops as you get further along, even though we're still pretty early at 17 weeks. Baby's heartbeat is much less than it was when I first went there at eight weeks where it was like 165 or something like that. So he is in the boy range though. It's under 140. I believe it was 135. And then Adam said something about, oh, we're going to check again tonight at home. And I told the girl, I was like, oh, somebody was so, so, so sweet and sent us a Doppler in the mail. And she goes, okay, well, then I want you to not be nervous. Baby is still very low. So if you don't find the heartbeat, do not get upset. She's like, it's down here, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, this guy's a pro. Don't worry. So she was very, very sweet about it. They offered me one more blood test since I already got the other genetic blood test and everything looks fine. The test that they offered me was for spina bifida. 
you have to be a certain amount of weeks into the second trimester in order to get the test for spina bifida. And so I said back to her, I was like, I'm not exactly quite sure what spina bifida is. I know it's very bad. I just don't know exactly what it is. And so she's like, um, she's like, well, it has to do with the spine and something about their limbs, but she wasn't really too sure herself. She said some people just want to know so they can prepare. Some people don't want to know at all. She said it's a abnormality that happens in the first trimester and we have to wait until now to test for it. And I said, well, honestly, I'm not going to get the blood work. I'd rather not know because I'm just too anxious of a person. I'm not going to do anything. Like if God forbid he has anything wrong with him when he's born, we'll cross those bridges when we come to them. But I'm choosing to have my baby regardless. I didn't say that to her. I just said, you know, we're, we're going to hold off. I'm too anxious to know. She was fine with that. And then the doctor came in a couple minutes later. I thought she was a doctor the whole time. <laughs> because they look alike and with masks with covid like they both have dark hair they both kind of have the same demeanor they're both very similar stature size height everything so i thought she was the doctor i'm like joking around with her i think she's a doc I think and then she's one one of the ones that might deliver my baby not her so then i hang up with adam i was like i'll be right out and she's like okay the doctor will be in in a minute i was like oops doctor comes in she's adorable she's like a boop 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 spitfire i love her very energetic she's like i'm sorry i'm out of breath i've been delivering babies all day i'm a couple minutes late i don't know if it's a full moon or something's in the air but she's delivering a lot of babies today and the other doctor i saw on the board is like a half an hour behind because of deliveries too so full moon but I was telling her about my asthma and she was like we called in the inhaler for you and I was explaining how my asthma isn't the same on the east coast than it is on the west coast like when I was home I used to get somebody sitting on my chest like a feeling of pressure tightness in my chest I would wheeze anybody that's been around somebody that's having an asthma attack you know that sound the wheeziness like the gurgling in your chest type of situation. I don't get any of that. What I get is I get really dry in here. It starts hurting when I breathe in, it burns. And then I get the coughing asthma fit, but I don't wheeze. My chest doesn't feel tight like a normal asthma attack, but I get the attack part of it. She's like, are you sure that it's asthma? And I was like, you're the doctor. But I said, I, I, I mean, I don't know and she goes could it be heartburn she was asking me questions but she was thinking out loud in the form of questions and I was like well I have been getting heartburn pretty bad I said but would heartburn cause an asthmatic type of coughing fit and she was like it might so she said we still prescribe the inhaler rushed it so it'll be at the pharmacy when you get there she said but also you could take Tums if Tums don't work for you then we can prescribe some other drug for you for heartburn so just see how that goes and if you need if the asthma doesn't stop she said if you have a nebulizer at home you can use that I do have a nebulizer and tons of albuterol in New Jersey but I don't have that here so I said no she goes well she said if you need it we can prescribe it it's just you know you'll have to take it like every night before bed just to keep everything okay and in check and you're breathing okay and I said okay she said but everything else looks perfect you are so on track we are so happy with your progress everything looks great you are still early do you have any questions I said well aside from the heartburn thing and the asthma thing I said I'm still working out she said great I was like but do I need to stop doing any exercises and she said nope she said you're fine do you have questions about specific exercises is something bothering you causing too much out of breath she's like you know because obviously if something is making you nauseous or dizzy or too out of breath just slow down drink some water she said but are there any specific exercises that are causing you that or causing question and I said to be honest I don't want to rip my abs I'm petrified to rip my abs and she's like you will know when to stop your body will tell you you're not going to be able to do those exercises anymore because your body will tell you it's you can't and she does have a point because I can't hang anymore because my body told me it doesn't like to hang, hang from a pull-up bar. I can't rock climb, even though it's perfectly safe. There's special harnesses for pregnant women so you're not hanging from your belly. I don't like that stretching feeling in my abs. She also told me that I will probably start experiencing more round ligament pain. For you guys that don't know what that is, your ligaments like in your pelvis 
area starts stretching as baby grows, it can cause sharp pains or like stabbing pains, especially if you move kind of quickly or you sit up too fast or you change positions kind of abruptly, then you'll get that pain. She's like, it's, it's nothing unless there's bleeding or the pain is severe and doesn't stop. It's normal and it's fine. And I said, okay, I, I could deal with that. I already started to get the round movement pain. The whole time Adam's on FaceTime, I was like, you know, he's out in the waiting room. She goes, oh, you're lucky that you're even in the waiting room. I have to yell at my girls. He's not even supposed to be in there. And I was like, well, he's not in the waiting room. He's in his office. You just have the same paint color joking and she's like what and she looks up in the phone she's like that looks like the same picture let me see that it looks like the same picture I have in hanging in my office and I was like I'm, I'm just kidding I don't want to get your girls in trouble she's like well I won't yell at them too hard <laughs> so that was it made my next appointment for four weeks that will actually be the anatomy scan because they scan between 19 and 21 I'll be 21 at that point still early baby's good mama's very very good they're very happy with my progress thank god I just said progress and didn't flinch progress Adam had to go back to work we always go out after the appointments to celebrate the place we were supposed to go is closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays we might go there on Saturday for Valentine's Day but that kind of puts a wrench in the plans that I was going to do but I'm not going to say anymore because it's a surprise and I'm probably going to post this video on Friday let's hope and get it get it edited tomorrow Shh, enough of that oh by the way we'll do a quick haul of what we got at the pharmacy because my inhaler wasn't ready so I was like oh I'll just shop around a little bit I did finally pick up my inhaler I got these chews for heartburn but anybody else has any natural heartburn remedies please put them below because you know me I like to be as natural as possible I got this chest rub kind of like a vix but it's the one that's all natural and actually made for babies because my logic is that if it's made for a baby, then the baby inside of me shouldn't be bothered by any of these ingredients. It's all natural. Sunflower oil, coconut oil, castor oil. I can't say that, not because I can't pronounce it. It's the actual flower, like the Latin flower name for sunflower. Seed wax, eucalyptus, lavender oil, dill weed oil, coriander seed oil, patchouli oil oh adam's gonna love that smell he hates patchouli chamomile oil vitamin e and that's it all of our natural ingredients maybe harvest for harvest really harvested harvested whoo or mined and then purified okay that's cool then my dear dear best friend cat suggested for me to get saline to keep everything moisturized because it is all dry in there and it hurts so bad so again i got the one for babies because if a baby can have it then baby inside me i'm assuming could probably have it when i got my surgery on my sinuses my doctor told me to use the one for babies so i figured i would not steer from that and then i had to be a girly girl and i got these two chubby sticks because i watched a video yesterday by nikki sky just found her love her her pregnancy videos and her fashion videos and she was saying that it's better for her we we're like very similarly complex complex did i just make up a word and sound fancy but i probably don't sound fancy because it's probably a made-up word is that a real word we have a similar complexion but she uses what do you call i want to say rouge but that is like 1982 that's worse than a side part in skinny jeans yeah. <laughs> and the laughing emoji laughing so hard to crying emoji i don't even want to talk about any of that but anyway cream blush and cream bronzer so i'm gonna try that because i use powders but i live in the desert of dry ass las vegas so i think those will be better on my skin for anti-aging okay i am outside of walmart i did not eat lunch aside from pretzel thing pretzel thin why do i always say pretzel things no pretzel thins and guacamole so i'm gonna run in i'm gonna get some stuff and i'm gonna go home and eat some stuff oh my gosh i forgot the best part about my appointment the doctor and the nurse the nurse <laughs> the doctor and the nurse practitioner both asked me if i've felt baby and i'm like I don't know, I think so, but people keep telling me it's like gas. Both of them were like, it'll probably feel like gas bubbles. That's definitely baby, you're feeling baby. And I'm like, yes! And then she goes, you know, as he gets bigger, then you will feel him more and more and you'll know for certain it's baby. But she's like, don't mistake in it, don't deny it, it's baby. Oh, makes me so happy. I remember one time I was having a full-blown car concert. I cannot sing you guys to save my life. And I'm belting it out in the car and all of a sudden I feel 
tap, 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 like inside my belly button. Like he's like, mom, no, spare me, please. That is our update of a COVID OBGYN appointment and baby Clausen's 17 week appointment. Everybody's good. We're doing great. I love you guys so very much. I will see you on the next one. Mwah.